Hello, and welcome to the Atlantic Council. My name is William Wexler. I'm the Senior Director of the Rafi Kariri Center and Middle East Programs here. Um, and I'm very excited to uh, open this day of discussions um, on behalf of both the Atlantic Council and the Institute for International Political Studies in Italy um, to talk about uh, the subject, new power dynamics in the MENA region after the Ukraine crisis. Um, the, uh, uh, this subject is absolutely critical. The Ukraine crisis is affecting so many um, uh, different um, issues and challenges, not just in Europe, but across the world and across the Middle East and North Africa. But before we begin those discussions, I think it's, I think it's very important for us to pause for a moment and reflect on what is the most important story going on in North Africa today the tremendous humanitarian crisis that's happening both in Morocco because of the earthquake and in Libya because of the floods that have taken so many lives, that have disrupted so many more, that have left people homeless and uh, without their family members and looking forward to months, years of real suffering. Um, I know I speak for all of us, for both organizations, when uh, we see the images that come up through our TV screens, it's truly horrifying. And we want to do everything that we can do. Um, what we can do here is um, aid the people through our scholarship, through raising awareness of the challenges that they face, of encouraging the governments in question from outside to care about this and offer humanitarian assistance and try over the longer term to deal with some of the underlying problems that have caused, in some cases, you know, problems that were big enough to begin with to become even bigger um, over the long term. So uh, I hope that, um, that what we see from this terrible event is, uh, is an inflection point to put more attention on the plight and the challenges of North Africa. And before we do anything else, I hope that you'll join me in just a brief moment of silence thinking about those victims. Thank you very much for that time. Next, I'd like to uh, uh, bring um, our CEO, Fred Kemp, the CEO of the Atlantic Council, who is joining us virtually and has a few uh, comments that he'd like to offer uh, those that are gathered here in person and those who are watching online through any of the various social media platforms, uh, through Zoom and through our website. Fred? Welcome, everyone. I'm Fred Kemp, President and CEO of the Atlantic Council. I'm delighted you have joined us for this hybrid event in collaboration with the Italian Institute for International Political Studies, a longtime and valued partner of the Atlantic Council. I'm deeply honored to extend a welcome to Ambassador Mariangela Zappia, an unwavering supporter of strengthening transatlantic relations and a great personal friend and friend of the Atlantic Council. She's a trailblazer as Italy's first female ambassador to the United States, having previously served as Italy's ambassador to NATO. We are also privileged to have with us Ambassador Giampiero Masolo, a long-standing friend of the Atlantic Council, personal friend, and esteemed International Advisory Board member. With a distinguished career in diplomacy, Ambassador Masolo currently serves as the president of the Institute for International Political Studies. Mariangela and Giampiero, it is wonderful to have you both here with us again. I'd also like to take this brief opportunity to thank the Atlantic Council staff who coordinated this event. Will Wexler, uh, whose leadership of the Middle East programs has been so outstanding, Kareem Mezran, and Elisa Pavia's effective guidance of North Africa program are what made this gathering possible. Kareem has been a steadfast leader of these efforts for many years already. With that, let us transition to the heart of today's discussion. The United States is locked in a great power competition with Russia and China across various political, economic, and social dimensions. The theater for this rivalry spans the globe, and North Africa and the Mediterranean are not immune from these challenges. It is evident that Russia has been proactive in expanding its military presence in the region, including the deployment of the Russian Wagner 
um, paramilitary group. Simultaneously, China has made significant strides in the area through its Belt and Road Initiative, fostering agreements with all North African states. These agreements encompass domains ranging from infrastructure development and technical cooperation to cultural partnerships and facilitation of trade. Significantly, the North African region also plays a crucial role in the context of the groundbreaking Abraham Accords. A recent example of this would be the back-channel negotiations between Libya and Israel, nations with a well-documented history of enmity that were regrettably undermined by a leak. This occurrence underscores the intricacies of diplomatic endeavors, as even nascent prospects for enduring peace can be susceptible to external influences. On a different note, Tunisia grapples with a concerning erosion of democratic institutions. The actions undertaken by the current president raise grave concerns about the future of democracy in Tunisia. We hope today's discourse sheds light on the intricate tapestry of North Africa's evolving geopolitical landscape. With distinguished guests like Ambassador Zapia and Masolo, we, we anticipate insightful perspectives and an enriching discussion of these complex dynamics. So thank you for joining us uh, for this important discussion. Good morning, everybody. I'm clearly not Mariangela Zappia, but Alessandro Gonzalez, the Deputy Chief of Mission at the Italian Embassy. Uh, Ambassador Zappia is uh, currently in New York to assist the, the Italian delegation at the high-level uh, week of the General Assembly, which will start tomorrow, and uh, assisting a delegation which is uh, uh, chaired by, led by Prime Minister Meloni and Vice Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs Tajani. So thank you very much to President Kemp, uh, Ambassador Massolo, distinguished guests. Uh, we are all very grateful to the Atlantic Council uh, for organizing this event, which serves as a traditional precursor to the upcoming uh, ninth Med Dialogues taking place in Rome uh, uh, between November 2nd and November 4th. The Med Dialogues uh, have become, uh, uh, through the years, uh, parts and parcels uh, with Italy, tangible commitment to fostering a positive agenda in the broader Mediterranean and a great tool to strengthen uh, uh, international and regional cooperation and dialogue. Over the years, the MED dialogues have been successfully convened uh, prominent international leaders, policy makers, media representatives, analysts, and experts from the region and from the international community. This initiative is a testament of Italy's dedication to upholding stability and prosperity in the Mediterranean region. It is also a very good example of cooperation between institutions like the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, centers of research, uh, uh, think tanks uh, uh, like uh, uh, the ISPI, uh, the Italian Institute for International Political Studies, and the Atlantic Council. And I know personally how much Ambassador Massolo, who will follow me, has invested uh, throughout his career in this endeavor. Uh, the broader Mediterranean is, for very obvious reason, uh, uh, one uh, uh, inescapable pri priority of Italian foreign policy. Security of de and development of the region uh, directly affect security and development of Italy. This is why Italy has no hidden agendas in the region, but rather a vested interest uh, in promoting stability and prosperity. Uh, in this endeavor, it is crucial to strengthen even more the cooperation with the United States. The recent visit uh, of Prime Minister Meloni here to Washington at the end of July and the meetings uh, with President Biden at the White House and in Congress uh, underscored the unbreakable strength of the, of, uh, of the bilateral relationship. Uh, but there was also a specific focus on the Mediterranean uh, as the joint statement that the two leaders signed on the occasion of their meeting at the White House, uh, they specifically recognized, and I quote, the vital importance of shared efforts to promote stability and prosperity in the wider Mediterranean region, including by addressing the root causes of instability, terrorism, and irregular migration flows." End of quote. Today, we are here to discuss the new power dynamics in the region after the Ukrainian cri crisis, I would say after the aggression of Russia against Ukraine. There is little doubt that many elements link the two scenarios, the challenge uh, the overall challenge posed by Russia to the international order based on rules, the uh, immediate repercussions on food security, the new reality and prospects of the, the international energy market, 
the presence of Wagner, the presence of Wagner, which is today much more uncertain and unpredictable. Uh, but it is still necessary also to uh, look at all these aspects, and I am sure that this will happen during the debate, also taking into account uh, the vulnerabilities uh, of the region that are already there, the lack of institutional continuity and political stability, the need for more sustainable economic and social systems, the lack of valid opportunities for the youth, the threat posed by climate change, and I think the severe floods in eastern Libya uh, were a stark reminder of the uh, impact of climate change in the region, and I really uh, want to express again our heartfelt condolences to our uh, Libyan friends, uh, and I would also like to remind the, uh, the consequences of the earthquake in, in Morocco. These are incredible tragedies. The Italian government, led by Prime Minister Meloni, has not only confirmed the traditional focus of the Italian foreign policy on the broader Mediterranean, it has also very actively engaged in dialogue, in diplomacy throughout the region, and has launched very concrete initiatives. Uh, let me just mention the International Conference on Migration and Development, which was held in Rome on July the 23rd, to gather consensus on a new comprehensive approach the so-called Rome process, aimed at promoting partnerships between countries of origin, transit, and destination of migration, reduce the impact of climate change on displaced persons and refugees, combat transnational crimes, and especially human trafficking, and simultaneously promote economic growth, investments, and sustainable development across the region to fully unlock its potential. Italy's G7 presidency, next year is a unique opportunity to help our main allies and partners and the international community to better and more effectively, effectively focus on the Mediterranean, emphasizing cooperation and partnership with our neighbors, committing to strengthen energy and digital connectivity, promoting respect for human rights. In other words, it is a great occasion to build bridges between the north and the south of the world with a special focus on Africa through a, a model uh, of partnership among equals. And I'm sure that also the ANGA, which is starting tomorrow, will discuss all these issues. So thank you very much for your attention. Looking forward to hearing from our esteemed panelists, uh, and fir first of them, uh, Ambassador Massolo, uh, President of ISPI, former Secretary General, Secretary General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I would like to stress, and many other things. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I will be very quick, just three points. The first is the expression of gratitude. Atlantic Council and ISPI are stable and strong partners in many initiatives, including the promotion of MED Dialogues. Uh, MED Dialogues, uh, as a matter of fact, lives and can, be, can prosper only through initiatives with corporations and partnerships as strong as the one we have with the Atlantic Council. And here, let me thank you very much, the people from Atlantic Council, Fred Kemp, Karim Mezran, William Wexler, Alisa Pavia. Uh, you guys, you make things uh, really happen and make it possible and embody the quality of our cooperation. Thank you very much. Uh, MED, MED uh, comes to its ninth edition. Uh, I started to sense that uh, it is a uh, viable and important initiative because starting from a certain period of time, uh, we were not that much in a position of running after people saying, come to the next edition, but we were called saying, look, when is the next edition? So I started thinking that we were on the good path, and we consolidated this, uh, actually also during the COVID period. The COVID period actually hampered the initiative and made it more difficult to bring it abroad, because MAD is a year-long initiative from one edition to the other, and we bring MAD organizing pre-MAD conferences in the region and elsewhere in important locations. So I am really happy that we were able this year to come back to this habit. And uh, this conference is exactly one of those 
approaching conferences to our med session that will be held this year, not beginning of December, but beginning of November from the 2nd to the 4th of November. So my third point is, of course, twofold. On uh, one side, uh, also my mind and heart go to uh, what is happening in Libya, what happened in Morocco, and really uh, taking, uh, taking note of how uh, deep are the implications, geoeconomic, geopolitical, social, stability-wise, etc., of natural phenomena. I think that we should take this uh, increasingly in consideration. Pandemics and uh, natural phenomena, geography, and in general, uh, everything that strikes from a natural and unhelpable point of view uh, need to be uh, factored in our uh, analysis and, uh, and uh, actually our studies. And I'm uh, very happy and very glad that this is what we are going to do also today. Uh, it is incredible how in uh, crises, uh, especially in the region, rapidly escalate from local to regional to global level. And uh, this is exactly what we will be speaking today uh, the role uh, of uh, a power like Russia, the uh, tightened and squeezed world uh, post-COVID and post-during and because of the Ukrainian crisis, all those uh, make a serious threat to stability. And if we don't face stability together, starting from shared analysis, stability will become instability, instability will have lasting and dreadful consequences, especially for countries like mine that are so linked and so profoundly in the region. But our hope is that also the United States will be, let me tell it, less shy and more present in what is, after all, and continue to be, continues to be a joint endeavor. So with this feelings in mind. I would like to uh, give the floor to Kirsten fonton Rose, thanking her for having accepted to moderate the first panel. Kirsten, the floor is yours.